Pastor Chuk Sogoye is the senior pastor of Resurrection Life Church Johannesburg. Pastor Chooks is a passionate teacher and preacher of the Word of God. He has been blessed by God with the uncanny ability and gift to explain and unpack deep and complex spiritual truths in very easy to understand and apply formats. He is the host of the radio broadcast programs Living the Life and Amazing Power of Woman. Over the years, Pastor Chooks has been actively involved in marketplace ministries. He is an entrepreneur and business consultant with an avid passion for raising other entrepreneurs and business leaders. Here is Pastor Chooks Ogoye. Good evening. Welcome to another edition of our online masterclass, Understanding the Goodness of God. My name is Chooks Ogoye. Uh, tonight is episode 116. Episode 116, we have been sharing on the goodness of God, the character of the God we serve. And we we exposing um, the truth of God's word regarding who God is and his character. Uh, the Bible says that those that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploit. Uh, the amount of exploit you do in the earth is determined by how clearly you know God and how much you know him. Uh, he, he, and, and, and for me, exploit is about representing him well. It, exploit is about manifesting his character in every situation, manifesting his power in every situation. The Bible says in, in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world, not that he loved righteous people, not that he loved uh, uh, Christians, not like he loved the church. He loved the world. He loves everybody in the world that he sent his only begotten son to die for everybody. For everybody. Uh, and, uh, uh, so that tells us something about the heart of the God we serve. That tells us something about his character. He is love. He is not just love to those who are good. He is not just love to those who are kind. He is not just love to those who are obedient to his word. He is love to everybody. He is love to everybody. Uh, and, 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 and if you understand that, that he is love to everybody, he, he is out to bless because love gives. So he's out to give everybody. However, not everybody <laughs> receives what he is given. Not everybody can receive what he is given. So the problem is not with God given. The problem is the thing that is given, reaching the people that it has been sent to. Okay? So, so something can be sent to you to an address. All right? And he left, he left the sender but never got to where it was sent. Or when he got to where it was sent, the person who is supposed to receive it was not at home, was not at the location where it was sent, so they didn't get it. Now, it doesn't mean the sender did not send it. So, so I, I want to share some thoughts today that I titled, Dishonor Hinders the Flow of the Goodness of God. Dishonor Hinders the Flow of the Goodness of God. And there are two levels of dishonor that I want to talk about. There is dishonor for self, when a person dishonors themselves. And they dishonor for God. When a person dishonors God. Of course, dishonor for self leads to dishonor of God. Okay? Dishonor of self leads to this dishonor of God. So, so I, want to, I want to just establish a truth there. That God is in the business of blessing. By nature, by his very nature, he wants to pour out his goodness 24-7 to all of mankind. He, he said he loved man so much. He loved the world so much. So while the world was in sin, he still loved the world. He still loved humanity. While they were his enemies. The Bible says that God commanded his love towards us. That while we are yet in our sin, while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So he loved us while we were sinners. Our sin did not stop him from loving. Oof. Our, our righteousness did not stop him from blessing. He, he was loving us and blessing us. So when you understand this, you know, when people say, no, if you, if you sin, God will not bless you. It's not true. God is blessing. However, if you sin, <laughs> and, and sin has the ability to block the blessing from coming through. So, so, so the, the parcel has been dispatched from the sender. However, when, when it got to, to the, 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 the sendee, the person that is supposed to receive it, something can block it right there. And it doesn't get through to the sendee because, not because the sender didn't send it, but because the sendee, there's something stopping it. 
Maybe the sender is not at home, uh, and and so the sender's uh, 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 parcel never got to where it was sent to. So I, I want to I want to unpack that truth today, so that it's clear in your mind. If God loved the world, if God loved the world while the Lord the world was in sin, while the world was alienated from God, while the world was was um, completely detached from God, God still loved. And the essence of love is that he gives. He gives. He gave his son. And the Bible says, him who did not spare his son, but gave him for us, will he not with him freely give us all things? So he has freely given us all things. But how come we don't have all things? The, all things has been dispatched from God. All things has been sent by the Father. But how come we don't have all things? Something has happened between the sender and the sendee. There is a block. But it's not the sender. It is something else. And we want to talk about it today. Now, let, let, me, let, me, uh, uh, let me take a scripture. And I, I am going to explain this truth from, from Psalm 84 verse 11. Psalm 84 verse 11. He said, For the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord gives grace. The Lord will give grace and glory. He gives grace and glory. Grace is the power of God, the resources of God made available to meet the needs of man. That's what grace is. So, so God says, I will send my grace to man because it's in my nature. You know, you know when he says he is a son, when you think about the sun, the sun radiates light and heat and gravitational pull on everything in the solar system. The solar system is so huge. The sun radiates light and heat and, and gravitational pull to everything in the, in the solar system. It doesn't select. It doesn't choose, okay, I'm going to send, send light to the earth and I'm going to send light to Mars. I'm going to send light to, Ju to Jupiter. I won't send to Neptune. I won't send to Uranus. No, no, no. All the planets, whether it's eight or nine of them in the planet, depending on your school of thought, all the planets receive from the sun. Gravitational pull, gra it, it light, heat, and it sends it. Now, <laughs> The son does not say, I will send to this one and not send to this one. So the goodness of God is constantly flowing from God. Because that's all that he is. He is, he is the fountain of goodness. He is the fountain of life. He is the fountain of light. That's all that he is. He keeps pouring goodness. He keeps pouring goodness. So if goodness is not getting to you, God did not stop pouring. Because while you are a sinner... <laughs> While you were his enemy, he still reached out to you. Because it is in his nature. God, listen, the God we serve is absolutely good and nothing but good. The God we serve is absolutely good and nothing but good. That's all he is. That's all he will ever be. Good God. Good things coming out from him. Kindness coming out from him. Generosity coming out from him. Mercy coming out from him. Oh, yes. Uh, blessings coming out from him. Provision coming up from him. The Bible says he opens his hands and all living things are fed from his hands. He supplies the need of everything in creation. The plants that are out there, they, not, they do not you know, labor. Their food comes because the sun opens up and they receive. <laughs> they receive. The animals that are there, the birds of the air, they don't, they neither toil nor spin, the Bible says. But they are fed every day. The, Lord, the Father provides for them. And they just, they just leave. The same way me and you are supposed to live and receive supply. And receive an abundance of supply. Too much of supply is supposed to come to everyone. You know, you know the, whole, the whole of human race and life on the earth now is just under 8 billion people. All 8 billion people are supposed to be fed sumptuously, are supposed to be fed uh, um, 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 more than enough by the Father. But, so the Father does not withhold. He does not withhold. Look at what the Bible says no good thing will He withhold from those who walk uprightly. So, so when 
when, when he sends good things, he sends to everybody. Now, when the good things don't arrive, the problem is not from the sender's side. The problem is with the sendee, the one that has been sent to. The, 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 that's where the blockage comes from. And we want to extract that. What are some of the things that, that are stopping the things that have been sent from getting to us? So it can either be that the things, there's a barrier that blocks it. And I pray today that every barrier between you and the blessings that God has sent to you will come down. Or there's a mispositioning. That either there is a barrier blocking the blessing or there is a mispositioning. In other words, the, the thing was sent to a target. It was sent to a location, but you are not at the location. So you missed it. It landed at the location. And, and, but you are not there at the location. You know, you know remember you know, when, when the Bible uh, told the story, he said, God said to the widow, I have commanded ravens, uh, no, no, extend to the prophet, I have commanded ravens to feed you there, to feed you there. So the ravens were going to bring the food there. If, if Elijah was not there, the food would not, if the food will be delivered, but the food will not get to him because he's not there. So, so God sends the blessings and God does not stop the blessings from coming. He sends the blessings. Can I say to you now that whatever provision, whatever you are asking from God, is being sent. Whatever the needs are in your life, it has been sent. If you didn't receive it, something is blocking it or you are misaligned. And this is what God wants us to deal with. All the things blocking our blessings. All the things hindering them from coming through. Where are those blockages? Where are those insulations? Those are the things you want to deal with and remove them. Break down the walls of Jericho so that the blessings sent to you will arrive at you. The blessings sent to you will arrive at you. The blessings sent to you will come without hindrance. And the devil loves, the devil loves those hindrances. He loves to erect them. He loves to help us erect them. He loves to help us erect them. And as, he, as we, we cooperate with him to erect them, then he is happy because the blessings sent to us don't come. The devil is a liar. Yeah, yeah. The flow of the goodness of God is coming into your life uninterrupted in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, I said that breakthrough that has been dispatched from heaven is coming into your life unhindered in the name of Jesus. That supply, that answer to prayer has been sent from heaven. It's come to you in the name of Jesus. The Father, he did not withhold it. He's not, he, Bible said, no good thing. No good thing. It pours from him. Good things pour from him. Good things fall from him. The Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 5, in, in verse, verse 45, no, no, Matthew chapter 5, yeah, verse 45, yes. He said that you may be sons of your father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. So, so it doesn't matter how unjust you are, he sends rain. But he may not get to you. It may not get to you, but he sends the rain anyway. <laughs> it may not get to you, but he sends it. I want you to understand the goodness of God's heart. He sends the blessing, but it may not get to you. Not because he didn't send it, but because your, your heart, your actions, your heart could create a barrier that blocks it from getting to you. So it stops somewhere. And, 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 and God wants those barriers to go. That's, what he, that's why he wants us to understand his goodness so that we can release our faith to challenge every barrier. To challenge every barrier. The Bible says that, that, that he, he that has been set free is free indeed. I am free to receive the blessings of God. I am free to receive everything the Father sends to me. So whatever the devil wants to erect on the way, I challenge it. I command it to get out of the way in the name of Jesus. For there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation will block the blessing. Condemnation will stop the flow. But today, we are declaring there is no condemnation. So whatever condemnation the enemy is trying to use, you got to push it down. Strife will stop the blessing from coming. Not because the Father didn't send it, but the, the strife erects, erects a barrier, and it doesn't come through. 
Uh, we're talking about dishonor today as one of those things that, that block the flow of the goodness of God. Dishonor for self and dishonor for God. Look at, look at uh, the story we, we read in Luke chapter 15. The story of the prodigal son. The boy um, contemplates dishonor in his heart long enough that he voices it. And he says, I want my share of inheritance today. I want it now. And I want to take it and go. And his father gives him the inheritance. Even though it was untimely. He collects it and he leaves. Did you notice? The father didn't curse him. The father didn't stop you know, um, him from going. He didn't curse him and he didn't stop him from going. So he left. And as he left, he frolicked for a while. We don't know how long a while. But he frolicked for a while with, with all that resources that he had and frittered them away and, and, and squandered them. And all of that blessing that he got from his father was frittered away. And then the hardship began. The Bible says a famine hit the land. I want you to notice that what has put him in a position where the famine is affecting him is not the father. It was his dishonor. His dishonor has repositioned him where a famine is hitting him. See, when he was at home, the, the, no famine would have hit him and affected him. But now, decisions that have been made from the source of, from the, from the, the, the balance of dishonor in his heart, has repositioned him and put him in a place where famine is affecting him. Famine is affecting him and he doesn't have resources in his hands. Dishonor had frittered away those resources. He dishonored himself. You know, dishonored the future that his father was building for him. Oh, he dishonored that future. There was a future that the father was, was building for him. He dishonored that future. He belittled that future. And that's why he took inheritance and left. Now he dishonored that future and now he frittered away all the resources and the famine heats. Can you see that whatever he is suffering now was not orchestrated by the father. It has been, it has, he has been brought into that position because of his dishonor. The dishonor has put him in a place where the goodness of his father was no longer getting to him. There's a flow of goodness and remember, the flow of goodness did not stop when he left home. The goodness is still flowing from his father because the staff that work for his father are still being blessed. They're still more than enough. The elder brother is still, you know, having access to all the things. If he chose to, if he chose to uh, enjoy them, they were available. So the flow of goodness did not stop. What stopped? He was mispositioned. <laughs> he has been repositioned. He's now far away from where the goodness of his father will reach him. The protection of his father will reach him. The provision of his father will reach him. He's now positioned away from the blessing of his father. Now, it was his decisions that repositioned him. It wasn't the father that put him in that position. It was the, his decisions that repositioned him. And he's now out of the will of the father. He's now out of the will of God. And suffering has started. And this is the thing sometimes people don't understand that dishonor can, can take you away from where the father put you and the consequences will not immediately show. See, for maybe for a few months, he was still living large. He was still, you know, frittering away resources. People were hailing him in town. People were, you know, celebrating with him. And he was still enjoying the residue <laughs> the residue of the father's blessings it was but now he's been disconnected from the father so he's been cut off you know uh, he's he's cut off from the pipeline so it doesn't mean stuff is not flowing in the pipeline anymore it's flowing but he's been cut off so he's been blocked so it's not getting to him all he has is what is left in the pipe and he is he is chowing it like no man's business he's poor and what he forgot I am no longer connected to the source, which is Father. 
I'm no longer connected to that anointing. I'm no longer connected. So it's been cut off. So it's no flowing anymore. That's what cut off that flow is dishonor. Dishonor has cut off the flow. And dishonor, <laughs> dishonor is what has put him in this precarious situation now. So he looks for a job and nobody will give him anything. No job. No job. So he ends up picking up something to survive. Something beneath him. That's the thing. Dishonor will beget dishonor. Dishonor will beget dishonor. Very soon, his environment began to reflect the dishonor that was in his heart. Remember, this dishonor was in his heart long before he left home. He had been building, he's been building, he's been building. And then one day, he flowed out of his mouth, I want to go. Give me a portion of inheritance, I want to go. But he's been building in his heart for, for some time. And nobody saw it. Nobody saw it. The day he spoke it was not the day he taught it. The day he made that request was not the day he taught it. He's been blow, you know, growing in his heart. He's been simmering in his heart. And that's the nature of dishonor. We don't see the consequences immediately. We don't see the consequences of dishonor immediately. Your building is growing in your heart. It's growing in your heart. It's growing in your heart. And then one day it spills out of your mouth. But you see... You might not even see the consequences immediately. For him, he didn't see the consequences immediately. He took everything from his father's house and went. And for a while, maybe possibly months, he was still enjoying. And if you asked him that time he was enjoying, he would tell you, ah, you know, I have my liberty now. I have my freedom now. I, uh, you know, I have... And he would tell you, life is good. If you met him, you know, a couple of weeks or months after he left his father, he said, life is good. Life is good. There are no, you know, don't mind my father. Life is good. Don't mind my brothers. Life is good. But was life really good? Dishonor has disconnected him. Dishonor has relocated him and dislocated him. Dislocated him from continuous flow of destiny blessing towards him. He ends up in a pig style. That's the, 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 the sad part. He ends up in a pig style. And in the pig style, he's smelling like a pig. Bible says nobody will even give him food. He, he wanted to eat the food of the pigs just to survive. And he is in this place. I don't know how long he had to endure that circumstance, but for some time. And <laughs> then suddenly, something happened in his heart. He realized, uh, 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 what am I doing here? What am I doing here? What am I doing here? The, there is a flow of goodness from my father to everybody who works for him even the guys in my father's business they are enjoying they are they are having the best of times ah 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 ah, ah. no 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 I, I need to i need to relocate myself i need to go back to my father to where goodness can reach me hallelujah and, and what was it he repented repentance will dislodge dishonor Repentance will dislodge this honor. He repented in his heart because he realized that my problem was my heart. My problem was my heart. My problem was not that my father hated me or that my father stopped pouring. My problem was my heart. My heart was misaligned. So he realigned his heart and, and he said, I'm going to go and beg my father. I'm going to go and repent and beg him and, 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 and ask for forgiveness. And then he got up and he acted on it. That was an act of honor. He honored himself. He said, I am no longer going to you know, grovel in this thing. <laughs> I'm going to go back to where I am supposed to be. You know, self-dishonor is being where you are not supposed to be. And, and he had doing what you're not supposed to be doing. When, whenever you misuse your body, you're dishonoring yourself. Whenever you misuse your mouth, you're dishonoring yourself. Because honor is being where God wants you to be. Being where he positioned you. That's when you honor yourself. Think about it. How can you not be where God wants you to be and, and believe that you, know, you are doing something right? The best anybody can be is to be where God told them to be. Where God sent you. When you are there, the blessings of God meet you there. Where, you see... When you are not where God sent you, you dishonor yourself. You dishonor... See, God gives you relationships. 
Let me use that as an illustration. God gives you relationships. He positions you. He, he connects you to people. He connects you to, to sources. He connects you. When you choose, I, I don't want that. And out of your own defiance or in your own rebellion, you disconnect yourself from that relationship. Or you don't connect yourself fully the way you are supposed to connect yourself. And, and you, you hinder yourself. And there are many people who are hindering what God wants to do in their lives because of rebellion, because of stubbornness, because of naughtiness, because of ignorance. They are hindering what God wants to do in their lives. God says, be there. God says, go there. But you know better. So, don't you see how dishonoring it is to yourself and to God? Because God positions you. God knows what you need. God understood what you need. And he positioned you and said, be there. Go there. And then you choose in your own ignorance, in your own knowing too much. You know better than God. And you choose, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. And then you move yourself out of where God wants. So you, you dishonor yourself and you dishonor yourself from the floor. That's what that guy realized. I, dis I disconnected myself from the flow of goodness. I disconnected myself from the flow of abundance. I disconnected myself from the flow of, of the blessings of my father. I disconnected myself. I'm going to reconnect myself. I'm going to reconnect myself. So he got up and then went back. In fact, the moment he said it in his heart, I'm going to reconnect myself, the connection was made. Because it's a hard thing. The connection was made. And he started retracing his steps back home he acted on it because it's not enough to say i have repented have you acted on your repentance because the the the, the proof of repentance is the fruit of repentance the proof of repentance is the fruit of repentance so so if you have truly repented we're going to see the fruit of it and the fruit of it for this young man was acting to go back home to go reconnect with his father so he went and on, on his way, hey, 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 the Bible says his father saw him from afar. And his father called back. I mean, um, um, got back to him. The father ran towards him and, and embraced him. Why? Because there was a change in his heart a couple of hours or a couple of days before now. And that change in his heart reconnected him to the flow of the father's love, to the flow of the father's kindness, to the flow of the father's goodness, to the flow of the father's resources. He reconnected to it. And bam! Everything started coming back into his life. Everything started coming back to his life. Dishonor disconnects you from the flow of the goodness of God. So you need to ask yourself the question, how am I dishonoring myself? How am I dishonoring God's purposes for my life? How am I dishonoring instructions that God has given to me? How am I dishonoring relationships that God has positioned for me? How am I dishonoring them? You need to pay attention and ask yourself, in what ways? And then repent and make adjustments. And make adjustments within your heart and say, no, 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 no. I'm going back to where my father says I should be. I'm going back to that relationship. I'm going to strengthen that relationship. I'm going to oil that relationship. I'm going to water that relationship. I'm going to nourish that relationship. I am drifting away from my, my, the, 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 the lifeline, the power line, the grace line through which the grace of God is flowing into my life for my healing, for my restoration. I am reconnecting to it. Somebody needs to make some decision today. You're hearing me. You're listening to the word of God that I'm preaching right now. And you know that you have disconnected from something that God has positioned you to. You, you know that you have dishonor, dishonor. And dishonor for yourself. Dishonor for the gift of God in your life. Dishonor for your body. And let me tell you something about dishonor. Dishonor breeds dishonor. Dishonor breeds dishonor. And there is more dishonor. And, and more and more dishonor. Until you are brought to the bottom. To the rock bottom. Mm -hmm. That's what dishonor does. Look at this young man. Dishonor brought him to be living with pigs. Do you know how smelly pig, pig styes are? He's now in a smelly environment. From living in opulence in his father's house, now he's ended up in a smelly environment. That's where dishonor will bring you. Where you are completely shut off from the flow of goodness. Where you're, so, so it's not the father that disconnects the flow. It's you that repositions yourself and dislocates yourself from the flow of the goodness of God. I want to say to you today, 
No good thing does the Father withhold from them that walk uprightly. No good thing. The Father is not withholding anything good. He is pouring out his love. He's pouring out provision. He's pouring out kindness. He's pouring out abundance. He's pouring it out. If it's not getting to you, maybe you are dislocated or you are dispositioned. You are in a place where you are not supposed to be. And this is time to like search your heart and pray and say, Holy Spirit, how have I misunderstood you or mis, uh, misrepresented or disobeyed you and I have disconnected from the flow of your goodness. Father, put me back in the flow. Put me back in the flow. Put me back in the flow. Somebody needs to reconnect to the flow of the goodness of God. You're hearing me right now. These words are hitting you. You need to reconnect. This is your moment to reconnect with the flow of the goodness of the Father towards you. Hallelujah. His love. He, he, see, see, he's not angry. He's not angry with you. No, he's not. He's not angry with you. In fact, let me tell you the disposition of his heart. He's grieving for you. He's grieving that you are lost. He's grieving that you cannot be found in the line of blessing. He's grieving that all the powerful things that are supposed to flow into your life, it, you, you, you are not, you're not receiving it. He's grieving. He wants you to get back into it. He wants you to reconnect to it. Because... He, 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 he knows what is good for you and he positioned you to receive that goodness. But this honor disconnects the flow. And you, don't want to, you no longer want to be in that place where the goodness of God is dried up, it's not coming. It's not coming because you're disconnected. He wants your heart to, to be fixed and to be reconnected to his purposes, to his will, to his counsel in the name of Jesus. You know, to, fight, to, to, to finish this today, I can give you examples upon examples of people who dishonor, remove them from the line of God's blessing. Saul, the king, is one example. God said to him through the prophet Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 13, he said, he said I would have established your, your, your dynasty. I would have established your dynasty forever. But because of dishonor, you've dislocated yourself. You removed yourself from the flow of the blessing. And, and Saul's, Saul's dishonor for himself caused him to miss out on God's plan for him. It's the same thing that we, 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 when we think about Gehazi. The same thing. Gehazi missed it because of dishonor for self. And dishonor for self will lead to dishonor for God. But tonight, we serve a merciful God who wants to welcome you back home. We serve a merciful God who wants to welcome you back home. Can you open your heart and receive? You, you don't have to go through the school of hard knocks. No, you don't have to go through all of that. You have to be where God wants you to be so that the blessing of God can come through. I don't know who you are, but I want to pray for you today. God wants to do amazing things in your life. God wants to do amazing things. And, and you must reposition yourself so the blessings can flow unhindered in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for my hearers today. I thank you for the brother, for the sister who you have spoken to. The, 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 the places that the enemy had pushed them to make wrong decisions and positioned them in places where your blessings are not coming through, where the goodness is not flowing. But today they are changing their mind. They are repenting. They are coming back. I pray today in the name of Jesus that you will forgive and that you will guide them back home. You'll guide them back to reconnect to where you want them to be so that your blessing can begin to flow unhindered in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We we'll continue tomorrow sharing on the goodness of God. I, I will look forward to seeing you 6, 7 p.m. South African time. If you do have any prayer requests or any questions, please reach us on the number on the screen, that number there, plus 27814210835. And we'll be happy to um, uh, um, you know, reach, out, reach back at you and maybe prayer, maybe you know, answer some questions, whatever it is. I, I'm happy to minister to you as the Spirit of God gives us enablement. Good night and God bless you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. 
as we continue. If this word today has really spoken to you, if this word has ministered to you, send us a, a message privately on that WhatsApp number and, and let us know that this was really a prophetic word for you and is ministered to you. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. There comes a time in your life when you need a change, an upgrade. You need upliftment. You need lasting results. You just want your life to be real. You need your life to be meaningful, deep, full, purposeful and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase, strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence, clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website .reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.